Hello. There are entire series on television devoted to treasure hunting. There's the famous Antiques Roadshow, where people flock to get their antiques appraised, hoping that they will turn out to possess something of immense value. There's American Pickers, where searchers scour the countryside looking for hidden treasures in junkyards, basements, garages, and barns. There are shows featuring metal detectors, such as the series Diggers, where metal detector hobbyists travel the country looking for relics of history and other buried treasures. There are countless specials about searchers looking for sunken treasure in shipwrecks on the ocean floor. Each of these shows takes us along vicariously on the quest of treasure hunting. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, Jesus tells parables about treasure hunting that similarly capture our imagination. For instance, Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. And again Jesus says, Anyone who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. To me, it is fascinating that Jesus compares discovering the kingdom of heaven to finding buried treasure or stumbling across a rare pearl. Essentially, Jesus is saying that God is just waiting to be found and that when we find God, it is like unearthing a magnificent treasure. But here's the thing. Through this metaphor, Jesus is trying to tell us something about the indescribable value of the kingdom of God. It is powerful. It is life-changing. It is eternal. It is beyond value. While earthly treasures ultimately decay, God's presence with us is something that will last forever. It won't go away. It will never leave us. In Matthew 6, Jesus says, Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume. I believe that this unfailing, magnificent treasure, which Jesus is talking about, can be summed up in five words. God's committed love for us. God is so committed to us that his love is everlasting. God is so committed to us that God's love for us never perishes. God is so committed to us that God's wondrous love, so splendid, is something that is more valued than the most prized treasure in the world. The treasure of God's committed love for us, I think is best described in the words of Romans 8, our New Testament lesson for today. Romans 8 states eloquently, what shall ever separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, God's love for us is inseparable. God's commitment to us is permanent. God's unfailing love for us is the greatest treasure of all. The Hebrew word for this is hesed, and is best translated as steadfast love. God's love for us is steadfast. It is unwavering. God's steadfast love 
is the most precious thing in the world. It is the one thing that will never fail. And nothing, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the steadfast, committed love of God. There is a reason why Romans 8 is so often read at funerals. It is because there are times in our lives when we really need to hear clearly about God's committed love for us and that it will never leave us. There are times in our lives, such as at the death of a loved one, when we desperately need reassurance that nothing, nothing, not even death, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. And at those times, or at any time of great need in our life, this inseparable love of God is to us a treasure, like a pearl of greatest value, like a treasure chest of imperishable gold. There are those times when we really need to hear clearly and with certainty that God's commitment to us is forever, and that nothing will be able to separate us from God's love. That is why Jesus said that the kingdom of God is such a wonderful treasure just waiting to be discovered by us. Because when we truly learn about God's love for us and for our dear ones, we learn that it is so powerful, so everlasting, so eternal, that nothing can ever separate us from it. And then we have found the greatest treasure of all. Please know that God loves you very much. You are holy and precious to God. And God's imperishable love for you is precious too. God's love for you is eternal. And nothing, nothing will ever stop you from being seen as the apple of God's eye. That steadfast, unfailing love of God for you is God's greatest gift to you. It is the greatest treasure that any of us has. Nothing will ever be able to separate us from it. So hold on to the love of God. Cling to it. Cherish it. For it is the single greatest gift in our lives. The committed love of God. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God, we cherish your committed love for us. We take comfort in the fact that nothing will ever be able to separate us from your love. And we treasure it. Thank you, Jesus. O oh God of tremendous love, please hold this world carefully in your hands, that your steadfast commitment to us may empower us to faithfully commit ourselves to doing your work of love in this world. We pray that we may work for peace in war zones and places of conflict. We pray that we may work for compassion for the hungry, the poor, the homeless, the refugees, and those who are oppressed, marginalized, and discriminated against. We pray that we may work for health for those who are sick, at risk from the coronavirus, or struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction. May your committed love for us motivate us to be committed to show love to those who are in need in our world. Oh God, we pray for protection for all healthcare workers in the face of this pandemic. We pray for protection for our teachers, staff, and students as we discuss how to proceed with school in the fall. We pray for protection for protesters working for justice in our society through their demonstrations. We pray for protection for all who are vulnerable in our society. May your steadfast love for us preserve us. Lord of goodness, we thank you for the love that you show us in our lives. We praise you for the love of family and of friends. We thank you for the gift of nature and of ways we can find for enjoyment during this time. And we thank you for your unfailing love for us. Lord, we lift up before you all who we know are specifically in need. We pray for those who are grieving the heart aching loss of a loved one. We pray for those who are sick, ill, hospitalized, or recovering. We pray for those carrying burdens and have particular needs. In your great committed love for us, may you sustain all those who we hold tenderly in prayer. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Amen.